Hello, everybody. Um, I thought I'd give a brief introduction to Kirchhoff's uh, Rules for Circuits to help get through the um, pre-lab today. What we need to know about Kirchhoff's Rules before we step into Kirchhoff's Rules are a few things. One um, is Ohm's Law, which is almost universally written as V equals IR. But what it really says is give me a change in potential and if it's a um, uh, what we call ohmic then our Delta V and our I here would produce a slope, which is the resistance to the wire. So another way of thinking about it is whenever you count encounter a resistor, it's going to cost you a change in potential. So Knowing this about Kirchhoff means um, that we can think about um, using Kirchhoff's rules for um, the simplest of circuits. So this is going to be the universal sign of a battery. And what a battery does is chemistry. So that there is a plus change in the potential as you travel that way through a battery. It's going to boost and give the circuit energy. Okay. So that means if I build a um, straightforward circuit, one that kind of looks like this, then my potential difference and the resistor in this craggly line thing is the uh, symbol for resistors, what invariably happens is we're going to get a current that's going to flow through all of these elements. So this is the current that's going to come out of the high end through the resistor and into the low end of the battery. And this is our basic experimental setup to, oh, sorry, here we go, to give us this data. So how does this help us with the um, pre-lab we're being asked to do? What Kirchhoff said is, let's get some maybe, maybe green, is if you follow the loop through, if you make a complete loop through the circuit, delta, uh, delta potential has to equal zero. This is no surprise. This is the conservation of energy. Which simply tells us that um, I gain and lose energy as I work my way around this circuit. The second of Kirchhoff's rules involves um, 
the circuit will um, analyze. Well, let's play. Let's stick with this rule for a second. So I'm black. I'm a pen. Let's build a circuit. Put a 12 volt stack of batteries in there. We come across. And we hit a, oh, let's just make this simple. A 200 ohm where um, ohm is the unit on the resistor. So we do Kirchhoff's rules and we start someplace, any place on the circuit is fine. And we just make ourselves a complete loop. So starting at the X, I go up and I hit the low end of the battery first and then go through the positive end of the battery. So I start with um, plus 12 volts. So we're doing Kirchhoff's loop rule. So the zero equals plus 12 volts. I'm sorry, the potential difference is plus 12 volts. Then we travel and we hit a resistor and the resistor is uh, negative IR just from Ohm's law where delta V is equal to IR. Go through the resistor and we return to our X. All right. Um, this equation very easily becomes Um, 12 volts equals I and uh, what do we say for R? 200. So I is just equal to 12 divided 0.12 then divided by 200 and we get um, let's see you know, I'm not even going to guess. I know it's going to be something on the order of 6, but on goes to calculator. Yeah, 0.6. Good. So we get 0 0.06 amps. So the unit of, of current is the amp. Uh, let me clean that up. All right. So simple circuit, and as we change the um, resistances or the power, um, the loop rule still holds true. So one more quick example. Build the battery. I'll come up. I'm going to hit one resistor. I'm going to hit another resistor and go back to the beginning. And we'll make these both um, 100 ohm resistors and still being pushed by our 12 volt battery. We apply Ohm's law. And we can pick a point and start our equation. Zero equals moving along, traveling. Ah, there we go. I've got a um, I and the uh, 100 ohm. Keep moving. Sorry, that should have been negative. Negative I and the 100 ohm. 
Then we hit the battery in the correct direction. So that's going to be plus 12 volts. Next, um, notice the currents, the eyes. That is the worst color I've ever chosen for a highlighter. That's better. Okay, so let's get rid of this. Let's put in my highlighter. And, oops, highlighter, I said. And we're going to notice that the current in this circuit has to be the same. It has to be the same because of a important principle, like the all that important, but an important principle that... Um, we have conservation of charge. In other words, you can't blow up an electron that is moving through this circuit. If you blew up an electron, it would, it would show as kind of a, as a um, high energy event. You probably wouldn't live through it. So the current has to be the same throughout um, this particular path. And we always have to keep the conservation of charge in mind. So we can do the math on this again. And we're going to get... Um, oops. We're going to get... I... R1 plus R2... is equal to our change in voltage or as I've written it in the green ink, our current is 12 volts divided by 100 ohms plus 100 ohms, and we get our 0 0.6 amps. Keeping the conservation of charge in mind is important because it introduces us to the next of Kirchhoff's rules, which is the junction rule. The junction rule says that um, if I have wires that split, the incoming current And then I'm going to have I1 and, oh, this is something fun. Let's bring I2 into the mix. This is basic mathematics. It says that I can't destroy electrons. I have to conserve charge. So into this junction, right here where all these wires meet, I'm going to get I goes in to the junction and I2 goes into the junction but I1 goes out. So this is kind of a matter of saying um, In is equal to out. So there's never a pileup of current at a junction. It all has to flow um, and move evenly through the circuit. So this becomes important in circuits that look like, well, that have... Um, split junctions. So the there's a junction going to a resistor and let's go to another resistor. Okay. So how do we handle this with K 
Kirchhoff's Luke rule. We pick a point and we make a complete loop. Back to there. Um, why don't I throw some numbers on this? So we'll keep this as 12 and each of these guys will be 100 ohms. So I do, I do my first loop out, and I get um, sorry, um, zero equals twelve volts minus. Um, This is, I need to label my um, current paths. Oops. So this is going to be, I2 and I1 going down this way, going down this way. Because I needed that labeling, so when I hit the loop roll, um, the current's going down. I'm in flow with the current, so I'm going to have a minus IR. And then I'm back to zero, back to my starting point with this loop. So this is... Um, <laughs> Can't use Roman numerals, can I? <laughs> so this was our uh, f first loop. Call it loop A. Then we may need to make our second loop. So our second loop will start at the same place. Only this time we're going to go all the way around to the next resistor and come back. So we should... And what we wind up doing is the same thing. We're going to get, um, it should be zero potential. We've left the circuit from that X. We went the correct direction through the 12 volt um, battery. And then we hit the resistor I two R and that's our loop B. Oh, I need an I one up here. So each of the resistors have their own unique current coming through it, which is not necessarily according to the junction rule, what we're going to get uh, for the currents coming out. So if I pick this um, bottom junction here, I'll see that I1 um, plus I2 are going in. And that has to equal what's going out which we're going to identify as I for the battery. So we can use our junction rule to help us figure out what's going on with I1 and I2. So 
So let's do A, now solving for I1. So it's going to be the 12 volts equaling I1 with the resistor that would divide both sides by. Likewise, we'll do the same thing in B, that the 12 volts is equal to I2 and its resistor, but we're going to divide both sides by that resistance. And since we've done this mathematically, we know... Um, The value for A for I1 was 0 0.6 um, amps. And for I2, we got 0 0.6 amps for B. We come into our junction rule now and in this arrangement of circuitry, I1 is 0 0.6 amps, I2 0 0.6 amps, and that tells us that we are drawing 1.2 amps out of the battery. All right, so, oops, keep this contrasted with what happened up here. Um, the same, so what happened up here? I'm pointing the stuff you probably can't see. Okay. Um, let's just do this. So notice that what happened up here with our Um, resistor elements sharing the same current is we basically wound up with this formula and a current that was 6 amps. Down here with the larger loop um, we needed both loops, A and B, and that resulted in that resulted in um, us having to take the currents out of each to get the current from the battery. I really want to highlight this again, that um, these are local um, currents coming in, meaning that they are specific to I1 and I2, which means they're specific to the resistors associated with those currents. The 12 is global, the 12. The 1.2 amps is global. It is associated with the I from the battery. Um, and it involves the entire circuit. So that when you're faced with uh, today's homework problem, um,
this is nothing more than recognizing that I've got the loop rule coming this way. And I can make another loop going around this way for B. Okay, so hopefully that's enough of an introduction that you can um, use the loop rule and the junction rule to figure out the currents everywhere. Um, and by everywhere, they're talking about... Um, They want to know here, and I think they wanted to know here, and here, and down here. All right, so uh, good luck. I hope this helped.